All right, today's video is going to be on how to hang a ceiling fan. This is going to be the Harbor Breeze Bayou Creek. It's got the uh, remote control and all that stuff built in it. Uh, I'll leave a link down below on where you can buy this fan at. But let's put it together. All right. Now normally all I need to do, all the only tools I need when I do this is normally my little... 18 volt with my 20 volt DeWalt drill. But the biggest thing, this is going to be your remote control for your ceiling fan. Now, the way these remote controls work, this side is for your ceiling fan the white, the blue, and the black. And this side is for what you hook into it. Now, say at my house, I've just got a single fan. It's for a single light. So your black wire will go here, your white wire will go here, and your ground will stay hooked up to the box. Now, on the fan side, of course, this is for your neutral. This fan, the blue wire is for your light. The black wire is for your fan. Now, if you live in a house where you've got a switch for your, your fan and one for your light for your ceiling fan, you have to decide which wire you want to put on here. I know when we used to wire houses, we used to uh, wire them with a piece of three wire. And all that is is uh, a black, a red, a white, and a ground. Uh, some of your newer houses, when they build it, that's the way yours is going to be wired. And if you've got two switches in that box, that's what it's for. Normally, what I would do is whatever wire controls the first switch, that's the one I would use. And then the other wire, be it the black or the red, you just put a wire nut on it and cap it off because it will no longer be used. So, and these newer uh, controls for your fan, they don't have the pot switches on them like they used to. The older ones, if you'll see right here, there used to be a bunch of switches in here, one through four, and you had to select which one you want, and you had to match this with your remote control, but the newer ones, you don't have to do that. Another word of advice if you're going to do these ceiling fans, uh, make sure you got some decent wire nuts. That is not a decent wire nut. Those are crap. And here's the little, the little remote control. And of course, you pop the back off and put the battery on it. Now to remove the blue coating on that. And that's all they use to this. Now with this remote, you could either leave it on the nightstand, or some of them's actually got it, where you could drill holes in the wall, and it'd actually stay like that. I myself, I'm gonna put it on the nightstand because I don't really see the reason to drill holes in the wall unless you absolutely positively have to. This right here is for hanging your fan. If you're hanging it from a longer ceiling, you can actually uh, take this screw out right here, pull it out, and you can put down, uh, longer down rods on it. It just depends on your ceiling. Of course, in this house, this is all I'm gonna need for this one. Weight kits, never use them. I've only had to use them on one ceiling fan and somebody paid $400 for a ceiling fan and that's the only one we ever had to balance and it took us about an hour to get it where it didn't wobble like it was going to come off the ceiling. So that's what that is. Uh, chances are you won't need it, but if you do, you've got it in the kit. And of course, this is all your arms for your, for your blades. And all I do with these, is go ahead and take them out of the pack and put them, that way you can kind of keep the trash all in the box, that way when you get ready to, when you're done, you ain't got a whole bunch of stuff to clean up. This right here is gonna be the last thing you use. This is for your fan kit. Some fans come with the, uh, for the light kit, not the fan kit, with the light kit, and some that don't, you have to buy it separately, but this one came with it. And this here are some better wire nuts but I would still buy a small pack of wire nuts these wire nuts here don't grab the wires with the crap 
and they can uh, eventually every time the wire could come loose and these are your little screws that you use to hold your ceiling fan blades on you can use these pieces I've hung them both ways never had a problem with either one but all you do is put those together like that I did electrical work for probably 13 years so I've done a lot of ceiling bands those five minute ceiling fans you can buy at Lowe's or Home Depot or your favorite lighting store are not five minute fans. They are aggravating to put together. They cut some of the steps out in it, but if you're not used to putting a ceiling fan together, it just adds to the uh, to the pain, if you will, of putting one up. The first five minute ceiling fan I got to put up one time probably took me 15, 20 minutes to put it up because I had to figure out how to manipulate their little five minute fan. And like most fan manufacturers, they'll give you some extra screws. Chances are there'll be an extra one of them. And this is for probably at the top of the fan. I'm not sure on that just yet. And you got a lock washer. The easiest way to get these fans out of this real tight thing you can do it one of two ways. You can go across where your paper's at and roll it like this, or you can go down the side. You don't want to run your knife or your uh, screwdriver across the blade. You could end up scratching it. Now these blades are two-sided. You got a black or a dark side and then a light side. When you put these fan blades together, if you are looking at it, that is the side that you will not see. So say if you want the dark side down like I do, you want to make sure that's not the side you see. That's the correct way to do it. And then you just put your screws in. not to strip these screws out because you very can, you, you can very easily with a drill most people like to use a regular screwdriver I've just done it for so long that I uh, I know how the drill works out trust me I have uh, stripped and broke screws off in doing this before Now all I'm doing is just laying my pieces on the bed because I'm actually hanging this one in my master bedroom. I've got one that I'm going to hang in the living room too. Hanging ceiling fans is not hard. It's just, you know, most people don't hang ceiling fans because they haven't never really done one. And it's like a guy told me, fear keeps people from doing a lot of stuff. It's not the, the, that they're actually scared of doing it. They just haven't never done it before, so they figured they'd just get somebody else to do it for them. Now when we were doing electrical work, we charged $85 to do this. Now to some people $85 is not a lot of money, but to other people's it is. So I'm assuming if you're watching a video on how to hang a ceiling man, your money is valuable to you. This piece right here, it's a two piece thing. This is the thing that actually hooks to the box that goes in the ceiling. And then this is the cap that covers everything up. Now what you got to do, you can loosen this screw, but you got to take this one out. Same thing on the other side. The reason why you only loosen this one is because it's a slotted piece. So 
So when you go to hang the ceiling fan, it goes like this right here. You hook the back side up, and then when you slide it, you can put the screw into the other hole. So that's how that works. This is what your lights are. This one's actually got LED lights with it. The only bad thing about ceiling fans now is it's hard to find a ceiling fan that has what I like to call actual light bulbs in it. These come with these little beady bulbs, the candle, we call them candle, candle arbor bulbs just because the fact of it's got the small ends on them. And most of your ceiling fans have these now. So if you're in a newer house, chances are this is the kind of bulbs you're going to have to get for your ceiling fan. If you've got a house that's several, well, probably 10, 15 years old, chances are it's got bigger bulbs in it, but it's hard to find a ceiling fan now that does not have those little ones in it. All right, so here's your, your globe for your light. Kind of nice. I've never put one of these up, but this feels like a well-built fan. It's actually, a lot of your fans, this glass piece is loose in it, but this one's actually glued in. So that's kind of nice. So we'll show you that the way. This piece right here goes on top of your ceiling fan, and I'll show you what that's for. I've actually put them up wrong. Matter of fact, the house I used to stay in, I put the ceiling fans up in it before I ever started doing electrical work, and I actually had put that piece on wrong. Now what you got right here, these screws right here are what hold, well, let me rephrase it. These pieces right here are held in by screws and all that is is to keep the motor from wobbling around and all you gotta do is come through and take these out. Now you will use these screws for your fans, for your fan blades, so uh, don't lose them. If you're gonna use a drill to do this, make sure you have a bit on it that's got a little length to it, because if you don't, you can scratch this all up. Now this will be covered up, so it won't be that big of a deal if you scratch that, but you want to make sure this right here doesn't get scratched up, because chances are that will be seen. See, I just drop a lock washer in here. And that's not a big deal. That's what I dropped in there. You can shake it out. And if you lose it in there and can't get it out, it's not a big deal. So. These screws here, when I've taken them out, you got the bolt itself or the screw itself, and then you got the lock washer. If you get to forget to put a lock washer on one, it's not a big deal. The blade will still stay there. All right. Now what I normally do is I put two blades on, and then I set it back in the box. That keeps it up off the thing, and it makes it easier to work with. Now as you can see, the dark side is up on this blade. My phones are making noises. Let's go ahead and kill that. If you'll notice I only got one screw in here, it makes it a little bit easier so you don't lose it. can over tighten those screws and break them off or strip them out so don't over tighten them there you go this right here is uh, for your fan kit and all it is where did I put it 
the two different connectors here can only fit a certain weight. But you just match the white wire up with the white wire. And then the black wire up to the blue wire. The screws for this is actually in this part. Now when you put this in together, see there's a little place missing out of here. Now what that place is for is to fit over where your screw where your uh, your selector switch for your forward or backwards part for your ceiling fan. So that's all you gotta do to it. And all you then all you gotta do is line your screws up. Now I was telling you I was gonna bring the box back, and this is the part where I do that. I'm gonna have to move the camera to get the box up here, so hang on. All right. My ceiling fan blades were in between the, uh, the tripod, so I couldn't get them up here. The reason why I put the box back up here is so you can set the uh, ceiling fan in the box and fix the top part of it. If you don't have the box, you can't set it flat down because of your, uh, your light kit. Now when we used to wire houses, we'd, uh, we'd put all the ceiling fans together downstairs or wherever we're at. And then once we got them all put together, we'd take them to the rooms that they were supposed to go in. So here's this. I'm gonna actually, I gotta get my pliers or whatever, but you can cut this off. Depending upon if you got a long uh, down rod, you have to use it all. But if you're just gonna use the little short down rod that is provided, you don't need all that. And there's no reason to try to stuff it all in the box. It's better off just go ahead and cut it off. So the way this piece goes into this piece, and then this piece goes on like this. The first ceiling fan I ever put together, I put this on like this. That is not right. This piece right here is to cover up the top part. Now, of course, you'll never see that unless you've got a two-story house and you're looking down on it. But uh, that's how that works. And what you do now is... Uh, Thread this up through here. Now when you do this, some of these ceiling fans, this shaft actually screws down in here, this one it doesn't, so it doesn't really matter. But if you've got a fan that's got a screw in part, make sure all your wires are on the same side of this little bar right here. If you don't, you'll twist your wires together. And uh, you could either rip them out of the, uh, the motor or uh, you won't be able to get it twisted down far enough. So now this pin goes through the hole in this other piece. And then this little safety pin thing, harder pin, goes in the other side and then it goes back down. So that's what your ceiling fan looks like put together. And now all we got to do is take the old light down and put the mount bracket up for this and ready to rock and roll. One more thing. I almost forgot. There's screws on this shaft right here. I'll show you once I take the camera down. You got to tighten these up. If you do not tighten these up, your fan will wobble. See now how that's good and solid. So. I'm going to shut the camera off. I'll give you a view of those screws and a pin that goes through, and then we'll uh, get to taking the other light down. And, all right, so here's your screws that I just tightened up. There's two of them. If you want to, you can tighten that, that nut up against the thing. I've never had one back out. But then you've got this pin that goes through, and then you got your carter pin on the other side. And then that pin slides down on top of that. And then there's that. All right, so what we got with this length of uh, down rod, we probably all you're gonna need 
is that much wire. You probably don't even need that much. But uh, just strip your wires out. Now we'll do it. Setup that I've got. I'm gonna put my black and my blue wire together because I've only got one black wire in that box. If you had a red and a blue, I mean a, a red and a black wire in your box, then you could hook them up separately. But down here in the bottom, since no, excuse me, since we're using a uh, one of these remotes, this is what we got to do. With the remote, you have to uh, hit blue to blue. Always twist your wires together before you put the wire net on them. That gives you less uh, chance of them coming apart. Make sure you twist them good and tight because you don't want to get this ceiling fan up and then hit the switch and let them work because you got a loose wire, especially if it's a ceiling hugger fan. And there you go. Hook those together like that. Tuck them in here. Now I'm going to get up here and take this other light down and I'm going to get this ceiling fan hung. Alright, so what you want to do with this is First, turn the switch off. Now normally you would have that off and leave it off for a little bit, let the bulb, bulbs cool, cool down, but I left it on like an idiot. Little piece just screws off, that drops off. <coughs> And the whole light comes out. And now we got to deal with hot bulbs. There we go. And then you got two screws that hold this apparatus up. And all you do is Loosen them up. And the fan twist off. Or the light twist off. Just like that. I'm going to have to clean this up. But, and then you just unhook your black, your white. And your ground. Now, in theory, with your light switch turned off, there should be no power there, but I always treat it as it's hot and put your wire nuts back on your stuff. So, let's get this cleaned up and uh, we'll get the ceiling fan done. Alright, so what we're doing, putting this up. And it's just as easy as. Uh, I'm using the same screws that the light Don't strip your screws out. Want that good and tight, that way it does not move back and forth. And then next, put your ceiling fan up here. Now the way this works, this ball just hooks right into there, goes up and over, and you want to spin it until it connects. There's a slit in that ball, and uh, that slit lines up with a groove on that uh, that mountain bracket. Wanted to show you this too on this mountain bracket, the way it looks. 
your, on your ball. See how that little groove is right there? When you when you slide this in here, that's got to lock into that. If you don't lock it in there, then your fan's going to be all over the place. So uh, when you're doing this, remember to make sure that lines up. And all you got to do is when you when you put the ceiling fan in there, all you got to do is rotate it, and you'll feel it click, and that keeps your fan stable. So you couldn't see that while ago. And then next, just take your your hot wire up. Like that. And then your neutral wire. I know y'all can't see a whole lot of this, but Just like that. Now what you have to do next is to try to get your remote control slid in this little groove right up here. Now see the way your, your remote control is, controller is grooved, this little piece it slides in like that. And I'll show that to you here in a few minutes. When you slide that in there, make sure all your wires are clear and all that good stuff. Also, your mount bracket has a ground wire on it, and you hook that ground wire to your ground wire here. Just like that. And then all you got to do is make sure all your wires are together or hid and not pinched and put it up like this right here. So I'm going to show you a close up of what the remote looks like. So the remote just slides in this little groove right here. The ball of the fan is right here and then just slides right on top. Now the wires, I put them down in here. Right down here, you can try to stuff them back up in the box, but there's really no reason to do that. So that's a close up. So now all we got to do is put the cover back on the top. I got to find my screws. All right, so all we got to do now is put the cover on it. And then work on the light kit. And what's always fun with this is you've got the screws on the other side. Now being this is my house, I don't mind walking on the bed. But when I was doing electric work, I weren't a real big fan of doing that somebody else's bed. I mean it's so far close to the ceiling up here. You got to be careful not to get fingerprints all over your ceiling and not scar the ceiling all up. one side and all you gotta do is repeat the process on the other side. Alright, since we got the top on, now all you gotta do put your lights on or in. Now being this light or this fan come with a remote control there'll be no pull chains on it. If you buy one with a that comes with a remote control, 
then you opt out on the uh, pull cords. So if you lose your remote control, the ceiling fan is worthless, so to speak. Now this little rubber piece right here, you leave it in where it's at. Get my light. Put that up. Some people take this and put it on here. I normally don't, but since we're doing a video on it, I will. That's just extra protection to hold your uh, light on. And then you just put everything back up. It will take it off before. And there you go. Now you got to do is turn the light switch back on. Light switch on. Get your lights working. And the ceiling fan. Now, the direction it's turning right now is what they call reverse. Reverse is what you want it to run in the winter time. What it does running that way is it actually pulls the air up against the ceiling and blows it back down. The reason why you would use that in the winter time is because heat rises and you want to blow the heat from the, the roof or ceiling back down into the living space. So that is reversed. So what you want to do is stop your ceiling fan. And that selector switch that I talked about a while ago, you want to flip it down. And that way, the ceiling fan goes the other way. And what that does is it actually pushes air down. So, that's how you hang a ceiling fan. My wife will be tickled because she's been wanting a ceiling fan in, in the room for a while. So, there we go. Hope y'all enjoyed this. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.